Hey everybody, Chris Gill here, and today we are doing the first in a long series of videos mixing an entire song using only the stock plugins that come with Studio One. Let's jump in. The first thing we're taking a look at is the mix bus, and this is hugely important and something I wish I would have dedicated more time to mastering, if you will. Uh, early on in my mixing career, I would have saved myself a lot of headache. So when I first get a song, uh, like the one we're gonna hear, what I do is I kind of get my level set, you know, um, and then I will just listen to like the bigger part of the track. So where the guitars are kicking, you know, the vocals are at their peak um, and kind of listen and see what needs to happen to get this mix generally to sound kind of the way I'm, I'm hearing it in my head. So let's do that now. Let's uh, we're just going to play through these tracks and see what kind of observations we can make. Okay, so clearly a big heavy rock song, uh, except that I'm not really getting that that low end uh, punch uh, and that that big fat low end that I want to hear. Uh, also, I'm hearing there, there's not a lot of presence in the mix, I, so I'm definitely going to want to add some high end. And I'm hearing a little bit of a nasty high mid range in the guitars, kind of around probably I'm guessing 2K. Um, and let's let's hear. I'm going to play this again one more time and really listen to those guitars and, and see if you can kind of pick up on that as well. Okay, so uh, I think we can make some pretty simple moves to correct all that. So looking at my mix bus here, the very first thing I add, and this pretty much is is any mix, is some sort of either a tape or a tube saturation plugin. This plugin is free. I don't think it comes installed by default, but you can go to the Persona shop online, get it for free, download it, install it. I love this thing. It's it's very um, flexible. It's very powerful. Um, and as you can see here, I don't have a ton dialed in. By the time everything that's in the mix feeds this, this thing can start to distort pretty quickly. So like a setting of 0.2 here at the bottom uh, is all you need to to really give, uh, what I want to say, some really pleasing harmonics to your mix to, to make it sound you know bigger, fatter, give it kind of a little bit of an analog vibe. Next up um, is the Pro EQ, and this is just the stock. EQ that comes with Studio One, nothing fancy, it's just a good clean digital EQ. I really like this thing for um, kind of mechanical tasks. Um, it's very, very good um, at, you know, surgical moves uh, and broad stroke moves as well. So let's look at what we've got going on here. I don't have anything drastic going on here. A little bit of a roll off on uh, at 35 hertz with a 60B per octave sh uh, shelf, or I'm sorry, not shelf, uh, low cut filter. and a tiny, tiny little bump here uh, at 72 hertz to kind of give me a little bit of that that low end. So we're, we're we're rolling off, you know, some of those super sub lows, giving me a little bump here to kind of counteract that, and just a tiny little bit of presence here, nothing drastic. This is where this magic is happening right here. So what's going on? We are cutting at 2.2k, uh, about 3 dB, and we've got a fairly narrow Q on it, and then to kind of counteract that, so. We kind of heard that upper mid-range in the guitars that I wasn't thrilled with. We're cutting that, and then again, to to counterbalance that, we are boosting with a much wider cue that's kind of enhancing some of the presence around those frequencies. So we're taking something out, but we're also putting something back in so so it doesn't feel like, oh, we've, we're now just got this big hole in our mix. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to play this pass again. I'm going to toggle this EQ on and off, and then uh, let's talk about the difference. Yeah, especially in the guitars. I mean, that's that is kind of already cleaned up some of that nasty uh, mid range that I was hearing earlier. So moving on, let's get into this plugin. Now, this is the new Fat Channel plugin, Fat Channel XT, and I love this thing because it it really allows me to do some really cool things uh, with some of these analog model EQs that we can't really do with uh, the, just the plain digital EQ. Again, this is free. This comes with Studio One. Um, and so let's, uh, I'm going to recollapse this. We're going to look just at the equalizer for right now. So this is the passive EQ. This is a model based on the old uh, Poltec style EQ. And what's going on here is you select a frequency. You can boost and cut that frequency at the same time. And you're already going, wait, time out. What, what do you mean boost and cut? Well, 
this boost curve and this attenuation or cut curve are different. The, the curve shapes are different. So when you use these two in, conjunc in conjunction with one another, what happens is this boost gives you a lot of that big bottom end, but that attenuation cut is happening at the same time, which um, kind of counterbalances some of the, the big sub woofy lows uh, that you'd normally get just adding a big uh, low boost on uh, at the bottom end of the mix. Same thing is going on here with the highs, except the difference is we select a boost frequency and then we select an attenuation frequency. But the, the principle here is the same. We're, we're boosting at 10K, but we're attenuating at 20K to kind of offset uh, that high end boost so it's not getting too harsh on us. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna toggle this EQ on and off and this uh, difference between this EQ on and off is gonna be pretty drastic, uh, but let's listen and then we'll talk about it. All right, so immediately, right away, that mix before was kind of like this for me. It sounded like everything was kind of like right here in these nasally frequencies. It sounded like the mix was right here in front of my face. And now all of a sudden, by doing this EQ, it's kind of pushed that mix out to the sides, uh, which sounds way better. I, already this mix to me is like 90% there. Maybe not 90%, we'll say 70% there, 75%, something like that. All right, so the final thing we're doing here is we have a compressor. Now, uh, I did a video on this uh, earlier, and if you watched that, you know my kind of my preferred ratio is somewhere between one and a half to two to one. Uh, however, this particular compressor is a fixed three to one ratio compressor. It is more aggressive than I'd, I'd normally use, but for the sake of this video, you know, again, using all stock plugins, I was able to find a setting in this that I actually liked quite a bit. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this mix and watch this needle here, same thing, we are not getting just a ton of gain reduction and it doesn't take a lot for uh, those transients to really get grabbed and really be controlled and the low end I think you're really going to hear uh, is where this compressor works the best. All right, so again, not doing anything drastic, but overall, huge difference in the way uh, the mix sounds. That snare drum has just a little bit more attack to it. That kick drum and the bass guitar feel a little bit more contained. Overall, just that it's giving it that, you know, glue you've probably heard people talk about. So now let's take a look at this whole mix. Um, and I'm going to start with the mix bus processing off, and then I'm just gonna kind of toggle it in and out so you can really hear the difference. Um, in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a plug-in uh, that is just going to help kind of level match because uh, we did we did pick up a, a couple dB of gain with some of this processing So all this mix tool is doing is to helping you lower that out so we can kind of do a, a fair comparison here All right, again, huge difference, night and day. I'm really liking where this mix is going. Mix bus processing, incredibly important for shaping how, how your mix is gonna go, how the rest of your session is gonna work out. With just these simple, simple moves really, we've already given our, our mix kind of the overall tone of where we're wanting to go, and hopefully that means we'll have to do less processing on our individual tracks. So uh, stick around for the next video. We're gonna get into my favorite subject, drums. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>